Hey everyone, welcome back to Painted Studio. I'm Maury Curtis Dunbar, your host of the messes in the messiest messy mess. <laughs> uh, we've been cleaning here. Sorry, my nose is itchy. I've been sanding and stuff all day. And so things are a little dusty around here. Uh, all right, so today, yesterday you saw me working on this table. Uh, I have applied a second coat of coal colored old world finishing paint on it and just to summarize we strip this put a two pound cut of shellac over it de-wax shellac then created our own deep bright pink uh with old world finishing baits paint tint base and faux effects french red faux color then we use over that old world finishing paint in coal two layers of each of the colors. This is dried, and now we're going to start distressing. Now the fun thing with old world finishing paint is that you can wet or dry distress it. And of course I don't have a piece of sandpaper right here, so let me go run and grab one over here. find a little piece that was torn. I don't need a whole big sheet. So the cool thing with this is that, hello Camille, hello Belinda, nice to see you with us. So this is 220 sandpaper. So our old world finishing paint sands really, really easily. You can see I'm already breaking through it, creating a little distress here sands like velvet, smooths everything out, no problem. And you get a very, very, very fine sawdust from it or you know, whatever you want to call it, paint dust when you sand. Not a problem with any surfaces. It just really works nicely. Now I'm going to zoom in a little, I think. Let's see if I can get this to zoom in. Sorry, that's not going to be close to where we were working. There we go. So the light sanding right here already broke through, but the wet sanding or the wet distressing is even nicer. Now I've got a little container of water here. Hi Beverly, nice to see you. And just a t-shirt cloth rag. Um, and when you get rags out of a box from the paint store, you can see they, they're usually all kinds of materials from t-shirt to ribbed, all kinds of stuff. I prefer the smooth t-shirt material for this. And then I'm just going to go in with my finger and I'm going to wipe back a little bit. And then I'm going to come over the top of this and expose the pink. Look how easy that is. Now, of course, the more paint you put on, the more you have to rub through to distress it. But I am putting like no pressure on here. I'm just doing a little wipe and I'm just bringing my little pink under color out. Now if I kept rubbing, I'd go th right through the pink and down to the wood tones. Um, and when you're distressing, part of the thing to remember is to distress where things wear naturally. So if, as you can see, when I hit this with my rag, I'm hitting high spots which would be where things wear off naturally. The other places to distress are, you don't want to create polka dots. When you're doing a piece of furniture, and you're, you're gonna get a close up of me doing this, but when you're rubbing through on a piece of furniture, a lot of old distressed furniture has sort of little scratch outs here and a little scratch out there and a little scratch out there, and they're all about the size of a quarter. And they don't look that good because that's not how things distress. Things have natural rub places. Look at the furniture you have that you go, God, that really needs to be touched up. Look how worn it is. And look at the way it's worn. There are places that are going to be natural for rubbing along edges like you see me doing here. Like right along these edges. That's a natural rub space. It's not going to be natural if I get a rub space up in here unless somebody has a tendency to stick their feet in that spot. So you have to pay attention to what would be a natural organic place for the distressing. 
And if I have a little texture, because some of this texture can be coarse that I don't like, I simply go over it, wipe it down with my cloth like I just did, and that's going to give me even a little more smoothing out without sanding it. And why, the reason I like wet distressing like this is I actually have a little more control over what's happening. It, um, I take off less accidentally. I don't sand through it too far and ruin my fit look. So I like doing it this way. See right here, I got a lot more paint, so it's taken a little more work to rub through it. Now, not all rub through, especially if you're going for a truly distressed look. I'm going for a more rub through look, so my look will be fairly uniform around here. But if you're going for a really distressed look, your distressing is not going to be even. Um, things don't wear evenly. Some spots will have heavier wear than others. So if you're wanting a very authentic, very distressed look, um, don't make it perfect, don't make it even, don't make it uh, exactly the same everywhere because that makes it look unnatural just like having little tiny distressed rub through marks. Looks really unnatural on things. And you're gonna notice that as I'm doing this, um, the black doesn't look very black. It looks very dark charcoal color. It will look darker because as I wet it here, you can see it darkens up. So when I put top coat on this, it's going to look deeper because the top coat will penetrate through, locking it to their base coat and um, it'll read much darker. I love how this distressing works. I love the pink popping through this. I think it's gonna look really sharp by the time I'm done. And all the colors that tend, like the pink, tends to look dirty as soon as this dries down again. But when I come back at it and wipe down a little more and wet it, you can see how the colors pop up nicely. Let's see if I can angle that down. So, uh, Desiree, it's just water. Old world finishing paint distresses simply with water. So we are just rubbing it back. That's why you have to top coat it though. It needs to be waxed or glazed or top coated or all three in appropriate layers. Otherwise you don't have any uh, durability out of this paint. I really like how this distresses though. It's so pretty. And I know that the color, especially the black, will look uneven and kind of patchy when it's dry like this. Well, it won't look that way once it's been sealed up, top coated, or waxed, or whatever it is I choose to do with this uh, after I do the uh, tabletop. Let's see, let's go up here. Let's see, I'm gonna zoom back out a little bit just so you can see a little better what I'm doing. Let's 
obviously this distressed look works very well because this piece of furniture was a nightmare to strip and then uh, a nightmare to sand and it's had weird chunky crunchy layers of stuff like I said I still haven't figured out whether it was an old piece that they did old style finishing on it with solvent worn stuff that's really weird or it just had some weird chemical reactions I'm kind of guessing that it was an older but distressed intentionally looking piece with a lot of chemicals that made it very hard to strip it down I'm just going to do this now all I'm doing is wiping exactly where I want the paint to be exposed and have a little detail there. Put that down there. That a little bit. And again, if you like sanding, if you're and and there. I know, don't know many of them, but there are actually people on the face of the earth who do like to sand things. Um, if you like sanding, this thing, this stuff sands like a dream too. You get a very almost talc fine dust when you sand, and it sands down velvety smooth. So you can do both. But when I've got a lot of detail like this and curved surfaces and colors I'm trying to expose. The wet distress is more efficient for me um, because I have more control and I don't over sand. I don't uh, forget spots. I don't make a, as big a mess as I could possibly make when I'm doing this kind of detail with sandpaper. Um, other people are more uh, dexterous with sandpaper than I am. Uh, I own up to the fact that, you know, I'm a little bit of a bull in a china shop a lot of the time. So if I want something very controlled, I have to find the best way to do it. And for me, wet distressing is it. And so now you know why we, now you're starting to see why we put the black and the pink together and the pink under the black because now that as I distress it, we get all these wonderful details popping up. Oh, how pretty that is. All right, let's see if I can get down to the feet where I'm working now. And the cool thing is this will wash out, you know, it'll be sort of stained black, but it'll be washed out and soft again. It's not like acrylics um, where this has got to be basically going to end up being garbage because it got hard from the paint that was rubbed with it. son is here with me. He's over in his corner, having been working on models all day while well, I battled various jobs. Uh, and if you happen to look back down my hallway and see the mess down there, it's because the contractor that was supposed to be done hours ago was supposed to come back today, too, and hasn't reappeared. Uh, the joys. I figure they'll get my air conditioner fixed just in time to turn it off for the winter, but at least it'll, it should be done and fixed for next year. That's the, that's the plan. Bit. 
it. All right, I'm gonna take a second, come back, read your questions. Uh, let me zoom out so you're not looking up my nose. Okay. Let's go back and see if I, okay. Uh, Desiree asks, if you painted raw wood, the pink in the old world paint, would you have to seal it before you painted the black and distress it? Um, no. Uh, old world finishing paint has the ability to seal grain as it's on its own, so you can paint it directly onto raw wood and it will not pop the grain. And you can paint these layers right on top of each other. They don't wet blend um, when you layer them. And so when you wipe them back like this, you get release to the fully to the next layer of color. So there's no need to put on an isolating layer. I did not do that when I did this piece. All right, so let's go back here. Um, I'm gonna zoom in just a little and we'll eat. Sorry for the bobbling. I know it's a little seasick making. Um, trust me, it does it to me too. Uh, but it's that this dopey gooseneck that I have on the floor thing, and I haven't found a tripod that is making me happy yet. And I've got about four of them, so that's <laughs> not promising. I think I want something they don't make. Alright, let's do that. Let's come up here and do this. I don't want tons of pink to show. I want it to be like the standout. Ooh, look at there's pink on that kind of highlight to this. And I'm telling you all, this Lazy Susan table that I built for the studio it is a lifesaver and all it is is an ikea coffee table with um a lazy susan mechanism that you can buy at home depot and it really just makes my life so much easier and it doesn't cost i've seen some of these big you know, commercial uh, Lazy Susans for furniture painting and for other things. They're expensive. Um, this one, I think if you bought the table new, I think I priced it out for somebody the other day. So if you bought the table new and the, me uh, the mechanics, the whole thing costs like $110. And the table is $99 of that. So if you have a table that has a top like a round top that lifts off, I'd say grab it and go for it. All right, let me get in here. It was pretty fast distressing. It took me way longer to do everything else. Now before I finish doing the top in the center, we're gonna seal this whole thing up because um, I'm doing a totally different treatment in the center and I need to make sure that the rest of the table is sealed and protected before I uh, start messing with that. So we're gonna do all the distressing first, then we'll top coat it all another day and Then we'll do the center. Okay, so I got all of those done. Let's get up under here. I asked my son today, what day is it today? Is it Saturday? Is it Friday? He's like, Mom, it's Thursday. I really just can't even keep track of the days of the weekend. <laughs> Oh, I knocked over some buckets. Oh, well, they were empty. All right, so we got to get up 
here. Now I'm going up above where you're seeing. So let's go up to the top. Sorry about that. I got to bend it back far enough so that it goes to center. Up here, some of these I just use a little sanding to smooth it out. So. my little tricks is sometimes when I do spindles, I come back behind them and do that. Not a whole lot, just to distress the back of it a little bit. I know it looks oddly patchy now, but it's going to look very cool when it's done. All right, so that part goes down. And let me zoom back out. Whoops, I didn't mean to turn the screen around. Sorry about that. Now you're staring at the wall instead of me. Okay, so we have just the top left to distress. So we'll do that. And we'll call it a day. Now, you saw I taught us to stress the top, the base of it, with t-shirt rag. But you can also use that, a, t a, a little sock. I have old tennis socks. So I take those and... Let's aim it down at the top here. Hey, Kathy Brown, nice to see you here. Okay, so I just dip it in the water. You can see it's like on my hand like that. And I'm just going over the back, getting the edges and the high points. It's a good use for old socks. I have a bunch of my son's old socks that he thinks I threw away and they're actually in my rags. Remember, I also painted the stick, the, the under supports, pink underneath too. 
So we're gonna make sure a little bit of that pink is just exposed because this is a flip top table. So, you know, all the, these little details are important. And just to remember everybody, we are indeed open for business still, our door's still open. So we might have people come through. It's happened before. So definitely do not hesitate, or I'm sorry, definitely listening to people outside while I'm talking, I'm getting distracted. Um, so don't be surprised if I have to stop for a moment and come back. I'm trying to multitask and I'm doing it badly by listening out my right ear to the people outside our doors and our front door's wide open because it's gorgeous out today. Now this kind of tabletop is called a pie crust for the obvious reason that there's a little lip that goes up like a tart pan or a pie crust. And I have a beautiful antique one at my home that was my grandmother's. And my grandmother had a love of antiques, so I have a couple very fine pieces that I was fortunate enough to inherit. but then I get pieces like this that are not so fine. And uh, they make great projects to do stuff like this on. And this is gonna be so cool. My house is this weird combination of fun painted furniture and really nice old antiques that I've inherited. So you never know what you're getting into in my house. <laughs> Definitely uh, eclectic with a lean towards traditional, which I know surprises a lot of people, but um, you know, I was, I'm an East Coast kid, so traditional is, is kind of part of my wheelhouse. You know, my grandmother had a Center Hall colonial house, I guess what I was used to. Antiques, navy blue, a lot of eagle prints and things. Oh Lord, and when my mother passed, she had the ugliest eagle sculpture I have ever seen in her living room. And I was with her when I bought, when she bought it, and my sister and I both tried to talk her out of it. It was made out of amethyst and jade and quartz, and it sounds like it should be gorgeous, and it should be. Ings, the wings sat weird on the back of the eagle. I mean, everybody who looked at it was like, why are the eagle's wings there? And it was just an odd piece. Fortunately, it was worth quite a bit, so when the estate had to sell it, it made the estate some money. Okay, so that's the back. We've got that little bit petite, uh, uh, distress there, so now we just have what's left here. I know, I babble about weird things when um, I'm doing these lives, but you know, life is weird, quite frankly. I'm not doing a whole lot of distressing here on the top. I just want to really get the edge because in here is all going to be painted a solid color and then we're going to do um, a de decoupage make mosaic on here. And I know you're not sure what I mean by a decoupage mosaic, so we'll, you'll have to work with me when we get there. We're not at that stage yet. just finish this little bit of distressing. Um, Old World Finishing Paint is just a terrific product for this kind of thing. It holds up to a lot of layers without bleeding colors in between and then distresses like a dream. Oh, yeah. 
So a lot of times when I'm working by myself, I have a movie on and, or a book in the background. And today I had a, a movie on that I was watching on Amazon Prime. And I'm coming to the realization that 2020 is not only a challenging year for a lot of reasons, but there aren't a lot of good movies that have come out since early this year for reasonable reasons. But, you know, when you do, you see the new releases come out on, the, I don't know, uh, on iTunes for Apple, to, you know, movies and stuff like that, or Pro Amazon Prime. I'm suddenly starting to realize, yeah, a lot of, there were a lot of um, B movies released as A movies to keep people having movies to watch this year. <laughs> I've seen a lot of very iffy movies. <laughs> ones that I'm thinking, thank goodness I only paid, you know, the little, the few dollars rental instead of full movie price for any of these, because that would not have been a, a, a sound purchase on some of the ones I've seen. <laughs> However, there have also been some great movies released that you could watch, and I, I love sort of campy horror movies. Um, Personally, I find Cabin in the Woods hysterical. If you haven't seen it, look it up. It's, it's very funny. It's the premise of uh, the ancients having to do a sacrifice every year. And, you know, it, it follows all the typical horror movie themes. But if you do something, you know, you have to release the beast to kill off people in a specific order. Only it gets really funny because the guy who's stoned in it is immune to all the, the gases they pump through that are supposed to hide all the wires and the lights and he sees things and people start figuring things out and it all just goes wrong in the funniest possible way. Um, the best way I can describe it is Brad Westlake, Bradley Westlake from West Wing gets eaten by a merman and it's hysterical. So that's, that's what I got for you on that. I loved it. So my new one, favorite one is Ready or Not, where the whole family is being kept alive by a demon, by the promise of sacrificing the newest family member on the wedding nights if they pull the wrong card from the game deck, and then mayhem ensues. And it was so funny. I mean, some of it was truly horrifying, but it was also so funny. I mean, they're playing, they're, they're playing hide and seek with guns, basically. And there were moments that were just classically funny. And I know it doesn't sound that way, but I have a very <laughs> black sense of humor on a lot of things. And, um, oh my gosh, yeah definitely dark humor. So funny though. So I'm just sort of rubbing in a little detail where the fluting is on the edge um, just to make sure that I have depth of detail when I glaze this and stuff later or top coated or wherever I decide to go to next. I haven't quite decided. this is it's not evenly distressed and it never should be but there's a couple places that are really distressed and a couple that have next to nothing so I want to get a few more in there Okay, 
So that's all done as well. And that means we are finished for the day. All right, push this back. Nice to see everybody here. I'm gonna scroll down to see if I missed anything. Yeah, sometimes you can't keep everything, Maddie. You're absolutely right. Okay, so I think I answered everybody's questions. Y'all seem to be enjoying it, but not a lot of questions. Of course, if you have questions, post them in the thread below this video. I will happily answer, for you, answer them for you. Um, and tomorrow we will be back with more. We'll probably be doing more on this table. So have a great afternoon, everybody. I hope you're staying uh, healthy, safe, and enjoying some outdoor time before the cold weather starts kicking in. Bet you couldn't wait to hear that from somebody. Anyway, have a good night, everybody. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.